he shows the hubcap and he goes, do I need to say the words? I'm grounded? Mm-hmm. For how long? From now on. <laughs> I grew up in a family, we were middle class. My dad was not into cars, he was a Chrysler guy. He had new ports back in the day, these giant land yachts. He had a Plymouth Volari station wagon. And one year, 1979, he bought this 79 Chrysler LeBaird town and country station wagon. Anybody knows anything about American cars, that was the dark era. It was the middle ages for American cars, for most cars indeed. This car was the family truckster right out of Christmas vacation. It was that yellowish cream tan color with the genuine fake wood siding on the side with the big moldings that separated the vinyl from the actual, would have these big plastic rivets that were the same contour as the, as the wood on the side of this car. So I hated driving that thing. But I had a little 81 Isuzu iMark four tour sedan. It looked like kind of like that era of a Honda Civic, but it was more rounded. In other countries, it's called the Isuzu Gemini. It was a hand-me-down car. And my dad said, here, I don't want this car. It's all yours. I was like, great. And he says, the payment's $219 a month. Now that's a lot of money for a kid who's in high school, right? It had the Isuzu engine, which was a 1.8 liter, same as the Chevy Love. And uh, I thought it was the fastest thing on earth because I had never driven anything else, right? So I put a little Weber carburetor on it and they made a header for it because the people were modifying Isuzu pickup trucks. And it got backed into by a plumbing truck. So I painted Indian Porsche red and I found this company that sells Porsche 930 replica whale tails in fiberglass. And I painted that red and black and then put it on the, on the trunk of that. So I was a ricer from the earliest days. I feel like I was part of the reason why <laughs> It <laughs> got a bad reputation. Anyway, so I used to like to do the neutral slam because the car was an automatic. And one day I was doing a neutral slam at the speed bump at the parking lot where my high school was. I went to William S. Hart High School. And I revved it up, you know, wait, 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 wait. this is before rev limiters and all that kind of stuff. And I just dropped it down in a drive, bam! And everybody's sitting there laughing like, oh, all that kind of shit. And I go to my buddy Aaron, I got nothing. No first, no second, no drive. He goes, try reverse. I got reverse. Okay, well drive, what do you mean okay? Drive home like that. You can't drive in reverse. Sure you can, you can't go fast, but you can drive in reverse. Well, I didn't know what to do. So I spun it around in reverse and I drove like this. Now I'm about three miles from my house. So I'm driving in reverse, and this is when I found out that you can only do about 30 miles an hour in reverse in most cars. I figured that if the car does 100 forwards, it does 100 backwards. I didn't know anything. So I pull up to the, no, my buddy Aaron is a very stoic guy, still friends with him to this day. He's just sitting there like, he's looking forward, not looking behind, he's just looking forward, and I'm driving. It was like, uh, what was that movie, Sling Blade? He was like that dude, he was very stoic. So I pull up to his bus stop, and he looks over, he taps me in the arm, he goes, look over there, and there's this old lady sitting at the bus stop, and she's giving this look of serious consternation. And I just go, these new Japanese cars, everything's all backwards in these things. And I kept driving. So I drove all the way home. Now, back at that time, there was a corner that you go around to get around the little hillside that was off a little cliff, and there was a ravine there. Pretty dangerous road. So I'm trying to navigate this, driving in reverse. My first time driving any distance in reverse. As I'm coming up the hill, I see my mom in the Chrysler LeBaron Town and Country Station Wagon come down the hill. And I can see her as I'm driving by, wilding the words, what the fuck? And she's British. <laughs> Maybe she used another F word, but that's what I saw. So I back it up, park it out in front of the house in a normal spot. She comes home with all the groceries, and then she sits down. She doesn't say anything. About an hour later, she comes up. She goes, why are you driving around with your headlights on? I'm like, my headlights? Yeah, you, when you came home, you're driving your headlights on. Why are you driving with your headlights on? It's in the middle of the day. And I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck is she talking? It was the reverse lights. <laughs> this is how I know I'm adopted. <laughs> Doesn't know nothing about car. So the next morning I had to go out there and pretend like I didn't know why my car would not go into drive, right? So I couldn't tell my dad I was doing neutral drops in the parking lot. So I took it in to get it fixed. And so I was allowed to use the car only to go to school, my mom's car only to go to school. I swore to myself I never wanted to drive that car again. And it was a big punishment my head, my dad held over my head for years. When I finally got into college, my dad was like, I got busted for jumping out of my girlfriend's bedroom in the middle of the night and her parents came home. So I was grounded from the car and I could only use the station wagon because he knows that I don't like driving that car. He didn't realize that the back seat folds down and it could come in handy in certain situations. So I had to beat him home one day because I told him I was going straight from work or straight to school to work and then straight home. So as long as I was home, he was like clockwork. He was five to six to 10, to 10 after six. As long as I was home by before that, I was good. So I was pushing. The town and country station wagon had a 318 with a four barrel. 
So I, the first thing I do when I get to put my roach clip on the rear view mirror and I turn the air cleaner upside down so you get that nice throaty four barrel sound, right? It was like a cheap man's K&N. So I missed my exit that day because I was trying to get around traffic and Grapevine right there is just right there on the Interstate 5 and it's very difficult to move over sometimes. So I missed the exit, I had to get off at Lyons. Lyons is a dedicated right-hand turn, okay? Protected right-hand turn. So I come around that corner in that station wagon, what? Four wheel drift on that corner and gather it back up before I hit the white little divider cone things that they have the sticks. Go down the hill, made the right, made the right turn and got all the way home. My dad comes in about 10 minutes later, he's in. So sitting down at that fam, feeling real good about myself, crisis averted. So I sit over here, he sits next to the wall. We start a conversation, he goes, how do you like driving mom's car? I said, well, it's a car, it gets me where I need to go, that kind of stuff. He said, you gotta be careful with that car. I said, why do you say that? I'm very careful with that car. I, he says, like cornering. When you go around a corner too fast, that's dangerous in that car. I know your car is a little sports car. Another hint that I was adopted. Azusa was not a sports car. He said, you got to be careful because careful, you go around the corner. It's, it's very dangerous in that car. I said, I'm, I'm good with the car. I, I know how to drive that car. So you got to be especially careful that you don't lose a fucking hubcap. He was sitting at the gas station, the 76 gas station across the street. This station wagon comes around the car. What? The hubcap goes off the car, past the gas station, into the restaurant parking lot next. <laughs> he goes over there, tries to pick it up. It's fucking blazing hot. <laughs> it's too hot for him to handle. He's got to go get a towel out of the car, picks it up, and he carried it home. And then, and then he shows the hubcap, and he goes, do I need to say the words? I'm grounded? Mm-hmm. For how long? From now on. <laughs> So that's how I knew that I was going to be a car person. Now, I had redeemed myself my dad with my dad somewhat over the course of about the next 18 months or so. He took a job where the owner of the company had a Porsche, but dad had a company car and an Oldsmobile Delta 88, which we used to do. It did the one wheel peel, but when we go steal uh, used tires from the dumpsters of the Firestone down the street to change the tires out at auto shop so we could do the burnouts. Well, one weekend he brought home the Porsche. It wasn't even a weekend, actually. It was the middle of the week now that I think of it. And it was cruise night on Lyons Avenue. Now, Lyons Avenue, New Hall, is a four-stop light town. <laughs> it was a very big thing. There's Old Orchard Park. There's a uh, big brick wall over there. And the kids would sit out there and everybody do kind of just do a little short little drag race over there by the Alpha Beta and whatnot. So this particular day, I was begging to drive my, my dad's Porsche just one time. Just one. I knew how to drive a stick, but I wanted to drive the car one time. And I redeemed myself. My dad felt he could trust me. <laughs> Huge fucking mistake. When he loans me the Porsche, I go to get gas. It's cruise night. I pull out of the gas station and Dave Heinsberg with his little Pinto pulls up next to me. Dave and I used to race with uh, against my Isuzu and he'd always beat me. So I give a pull up there. Now I've never driven a Porsche fast through the gears. Rev it up, drop the clutch, thing, lay some rubber, grab second gear, chirp the tires. And you know how poor the old Porsches of that time were? The back ends kind of tend to move around a lot. And I put several car lengths on with them, slammed on the brakes and then made the U-turn by the AMP and came, came back into the gas station where it was two sheriff cars bounce in there. So I get a ticket for exhibition of speed. I had no idea what that was. The problem was the court date on that particular year was a Friday and my birthday was on Saturday. If you went to court as a juvenile, you had to bring a parent. So I figured I'll just go in on Monday and I can use the excuse when I get in there that it was my birthday, it completely slipped my mind. Sorry, you know, blah, 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 I'm here to pay the fine. No, no contest, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I get in there and it's a pack court that day and I get up there and I said, Craig Lieberman, docket number, da, 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 exhibition speed, how do you plead? Guilty with an explanation. This guy was a smart ass. Takes off his glasses, goes, this ought to be good. Let's hear it. And the whole, cla the whole courtroom starts chuckling, but not too much in a kind of a restrained chuckle. I said, well, sir, uh, you, you see, I'm used to driving this little four-cylinder Isuzu and it's it, I, it's not a stick shift, so I don't really know how to you know, do it, but my, my dad asked me to go get gas and I guess it's the cruise night, the kids are over there doing their thing with the cars and stuff and I was just trying to get gas and I just got a little excited and I did, my foot came off the, the clutch thing too fast and it chirped the tires and I guess he thought that I was part of that all that nonsense. And he goes, son, did you read the back of your ticket? I said, there's no notes on the back of my ticket. I have it right here. There's no notes on it. Well, there's notes on the back of the ticket. Every time a police officer pulls you over, they're writing notes so they remember the details of the case. This is the way it was back in the early 1980s. And he goes, subject, rev the engine uh, several times, uh, launched the car, did 75 feet of black mark, chirped second gear, and then continued to accelerate, estimated speed 60 plus, and the whole court's kind of laughing, and half of them are shocked, and half of them are laughing, and I'm trying not to laugh because I realized the silliness of the situation. I'm so fucking fucked. <laughs> done. I'm a kid, I'm scared to death. 
And he goes, uh, would you like to change your plea now? I said, yes, guilty. He goes, $350 and three days in jail. I said, I'll take the $350. He goes, and three days with jail. Go with the bailiff. Now I'm wearing my best Argyle sweater vest and a tie, the little bowl, the little skinny leather ties. It was the 80s. Don't, don't come at me. All that kind of stuff. I was well-dressed. I was a cross between Simon Le Bon and Depeche Mode Martin Gore, right? Went in the back, takes my wallet out, takes a, what I got in there, a fucking laundry card, a fucking library card, a driver's license, and one condom. He goes, you're not going to need this where you're going. Oh, second thought, you maybe you will. Now I'm petrified. So I call my dad. Dad, I'm in jail. He's <laughs> no surprise what you do this time. I didn't do anything. I got a ticket, and I let it go to expect. When do you get out? I uh, get out in three days. See you on Thursday. <laughs> Click. The moral of the story is I never, ever, ever let a warrant, a ticket go to warrant again. Off the Record can help you find a speeding ticket or traffic citation no matter where you get it. You just download their app, take a photo of your ticket, and they match you with the best local attorney to achieve the best possible outcome. They can help you avoid costly insurance premium increases, points on your license, and other issues. And when you register, use the code VINWIKI for a discount on their services. If you don't have a ticket that you need to fight right now, go ahead and download their app and register using the VINWIKI code, and that will reserve your discount for whenever you might need it in the future. It's a great thing to have in your pocket when you never know who's going to pull up behind you on your next road trip.